Effective soil amelioration strategies offer growers significant yield benefits. But sometimes things in the paddock just don't go to plan. So today I've put together a collection of grower experiences on soil amelioration. And At the Perth Grains Research Update event, Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development researcher Bindia Spista shared a range of soil amelioration lessons that WA growers have learned the hard way. Over the last five years, we've done a lot of research on soil amelioration management practices, and we always tell the good things and the good stories about soil amelioration and the yield benefits you can gain. But actually, it's not always as simple as it sounds, and not all soil amelioration techniques are suited to all soil types. Growers have found when they've gone to apply the research in the paddock that there can actually be mistakes or bloopers that occur. Now, a blooper is defined as an embarrassing mistake. I'm not sure that all of these examples I show in my presentation are embarrassing mistakes. They're more just a result of what's happened. But there's certainly some very good lessons that we can learn that will hopefully prevent others from making the mistakes in the future. The first blooper to kick things off is applying pre-emergent herbicides post-amelioration. One of the challenges that we've noticed post-amelioration is that pre-emergent herbicides can work too effectively. So effectively, in fact, they actually reduce plant establishment. So you need to be really careful when you're going in to seed uh, newly ameliorated paddocks that you actually um, consider what herbicides you're going to use just to make sure that they're not going to impact on plant establishment. Another lesson um, that's been learnt, I think that's quite common, is moulding or spading dry isn't as good as wet. And that's for two reasons. So one is you actually do a better job of inversion when the soil is, is wet. So this is an example of, uh, it was topsoil slotted and then and spaded and dry. And you can see that the, um, it mixed down to about here, the 30 centimetres. But when the same farmer, same process, same paddock even, but he did it when it was wet, you can actually see that we got much better ver inversion and mixing down to about 50 centimetres here. The other aspect to why ameliorating soils wet is better than dry is that the risk of erosion in autumn is much higher. So some growers have found where they've ameliorated in autumn, then they haven't had um, the rain and the soil hasn't wet up enough and they get poor plant establishment that can be subjected to erosion. Now why that looks terrible and none of us want it to erode, what we do see very commonly is that those, those erosion patches do actually recover and we get good plant establishment when it finally does rain. Sometimes they'll reseed them, but not always. And then we still see that there is a good benefit and in fact a yield increase from the mole boarding, despite that initial um, soil erosion and setback early on. But it is possible to have too much of a good thing. As some WA growers have found, it can be too wet for ripping as well. Bindi is quick to point out that this is particularly problematic in heavier soil types. You need to get out of the ripper if you're ripping in spring grab a handful of soil and roll it. And if you can make a soil sausage like the one I've made over there, it's actually too wet for ripping and you'll just end up with slots and the soil's actually not gonna fracture. So you're not gonna achieve what you want to. The next two bloopers are also related to deep ripping, but focused more on the undesirable soil characteristics brought to the surface and the related return on investment. It's commonly reported that you can get these big yield benefits from deep ripping up to 500 kilos, but in actual fact, you don't get this response in all soil types. So another common blooper is actually deep ripping the heavy loamy soils, particularly if they're a calcareous loam that might be sodic and dispersive. And uh, in one of the GRDC funded trials that we had, and they tried to rip last autumn when conditions were dry using uh, a deep ripper with topsoil slotting plates, they actually found that the soil was too dry and the topsoil slotting plates couldn't get in and the soil came up really clumpy. So when they took the topsoil slotting plates off, they then put the ripper in and were able to dig a bit deeper. So their target depth was 400 millimetres, but the soil was too dry and too hard. So they had to go in two passes and they managed to get the ripping down to 300. But the soil surface that was left was really cloddy and actually impacted on plant establishment. Bindi and the team went on to examine the impact on yield from this amelioration decision 
in both 2018 and 2019. So this is um, the trial results from that, from two years of trial results. And because there was sodic, it was sodic and dispersive, the treatments here did include um, gypsum, five tons of gypsum. We had a nil ripping depth, 200, which was uh, mils ripping, and 300 mils. And you can see that there was an impact of plant establishment um, in the ripping. So it did reduce plant establishment by about 20 plants per square metre. If we have a look at the yield in 2018 and 19, which were also both um, dry years, you can see that the crop in 2018, the ripping did actually recover. So it actually yielded the same as the control, but there was actually no benefit to the ripping. And in 2019, again, we saw no benefit of the deeper ripping or the gypsum. Not only was there no real yield increase, there was also a negative return on investment, which Bindi says reflects the research findings that there's no significant benefit to deep ripping heavy sodic dispersive soils. And it's a similar story for delving duplex soils. So this is the key one for today, I think, that bloopers commonly occur when the treatment's not applicable for all soil types in a paddock. So you might know in, a, in um, see a paddock and you've got water repellent soil and go out ploughing or delving, but actually you've underestimated the, that variability in the paddock and often it is that in duplex soils, so more commonly in the southern regions, um, it does happen in the north too. Um, but you've underestimated how that, that depth to clay varies. So for example, one blooper that we found down in Esperance uh, by it was a farmer delved his duplex soil that varies in depth from 10 centimetres to 60 centimetres. And this was done back in 2009 um, when delving was just emerging. And what he found is he actually brought up to the surface this sodic grey clay that was dispersive and actually was high in boron. Ten years on and this grower is still seeing a negative yield impact from delving the shallow duplex areas of his paddock. Up to one tonne per hectare in fact. How can we learn from this mistake? So initially when they went to delve the paddock they knew that the variable depth to clay was a problem and they looked at EM and the gamma radiometrics to try and zone out those areas but they found that their background salinity and, and soil moisture were too high, so they didn't get an accurate delving map. Um, so now the farmer has actually gone on and because he keeps the risk of, I guess, turning up this sodic soil and having this yield impact, he now is claying out his poor sand areas and he's developed a good seeding system um, that is good in the non-wetting soils. That, uh, something that he can apply across the whole paddock without having to worry about bringing up soils that he's not able to manage or have an impact on production. Moldboard ploughing can also turn up some unwanted soil constraints in duplex soils, in the form of cloddy patches. For this blooper, Bindi shares an example of this experience at a trial site in Ravensthorpe. So this is another example down at um, Ravensthorpe and this is a large scale trial and this is the moldboard and spading treatment and you can see here that it's really variable spatially across the paddock, this soil type. So this is actually, I think it's about 12 metres in that distance and so the soil's varying every 10 to 12 metres. So that's really hard to find something that you can map that depth. What they found, the moldboarding here, it did reduce plant establishment compared to the control. What the farmers seen is that there's still lumps and this is after four or five years or well, in fact he said they're still there today um, and it's been rolled every year and speed tilled in 2007 but there's and they're still seeing poor plant establishment in those areas. Coming to the end of the presentation Bindi shifted the focus to a challenge that can come with liming acid soils at depth. So the research has shown to ameliorate those deeply acidic sands that we need to apply lime, we need to mix it deeper, and then if they have compaction, you need to deep rip out that compaction. But what does this mean in the paddock? Well, actually, in some of those soils that have never been deep ripped, it means we find rocks, and they can be huge rocks, and they can actually bend the hydraulic arm on the ripper. Oops. Break the ripper. <laughs> so, Apparently this is the um, super size, toughest hydraulic arm that you can buy that um, 
yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Now, I did get asked to put the economics onto this, but I reckon you guys can figure that out better than I can. So what's happened is the paddock's been zoned up into these rock warning zones so that the, the um, driver knows when he comes into these ones he has to pay a bit more attention and listen to the ripper or start to lift it a bit shallower. The final blooper. Soil after amelioration is soft, very soft. So trafficability um, is a big challenge as well in these soft soils. So after amelioration, the soil is soft. And you can see this is um, one of the CTF or after ploughing and they've fallen off the wheel tracks and got a bit bogged. And then it can happen after deep ripping as well. One strategy to deal with this risk is using a roller behind a deep ripper, which helps firm the soil surface for machinery and also aids plant establishment. So another way to help um, manage the soft soil post soil amelioration is to actually consider your cedar. So using um, a cedar that has independent depth control, it, farmers have found is particularly good uh, in ameliorated soils because uh, you can tend to get sinking of the bar. So this means that we just maintain good plant establishment. Another really important way to manage the soft soil post amelioration is actually to match your wheel tracks and move into control traffic. Because if you're going to invest all this money in soil amelioration, really the last thing you want to do is run over it. So in conclusion, Bindi has three key messages for all growers to keep in mind when it comes to soil amelioration. The most important thing is that you need to know what your soil is, what are the soil properties to depth, and we recommend every 10 centimetres, and also how it can vary spatially. Because especially with strategic tillage methods, the last thing you want to do is turn up a, a sodic or a toxic subsoil that's going to impact on your plant establishment. And you also want to be able to choose the right tool for the job, because in some of these cases, soil, they're probably not bloopers, it's just that and the technique doesn't work, it's just it doesn't work for that soil type. So it's really critical that you actually know what you're targeting and choose the right machine. The second uh, key message is that you ameliorate to the conditions, not to the calendar. So it's really tempting to chase that half a ton or a ton uh, benefit from soil amelioration. The key is before you go ripping is to make sure, or ploughing, make sure the soil profile is fully wet to get the technique working and consider that erosion. So growers have found that if you ameliorate when it's half wet and half dry, that can actually be more of a problem. So make sure that you go on the conditions and don't just go because it'll fit into your calendar at that time. Maybe you're better to pull up and wait for a bit. The third and final key message is, if in doubt, leave it out. It's really important when you're doing the amelioration, get out of the tractor, get your spade, have a look, have a dig. Is it doing what it wants? Is it coming up too cloddy? And if it is, stop, make it a trial. <laughs> have a strip that you can monitor and then see how that goes. Or perhaps just pull up and wait and um, look for other opportunities to do it. All right, thank you very much. Bindi Espista, research scientist at DPIRD. And this video is one in a series of update videos recorded at the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Updates. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.